I read Menschen mit Nazi-Hintergrund as a productive intervention to rattle German Erinnerungskultur. Germany's memory culture is at a critical junction. Those affected by racism demand visibility in the present and insist on reflection of the past. Thousands came out for massive Black Lives Matter demonstrations last year. Race, long a blind spot of German society, has entered the political debate about police violence and racial profiling. Even the Grundgesetz shall in future prohibit explicitly discrimination on racist grounds. One million people of African descent live in Germany. They are the most visible of 21 million whose grandparents or parents or they themselves have immigrated from other parts of the world over the past decades. That's over a quarter of post-migrant German society. It seems logical to do away with the belief that there were unmarked Germans as the normalized category versus those marked as other Menschen mit Migrationshintergrund. Regarding memory culture, the normalized perspective of ethnic Germans should also be seen for what it is, a myth, a myth of so-called original German memory culture. I have done research on post-colonial memory in Namibia and on decolonized movements in Germany. While doing so, I've learned that multiple memories, argument and debate create space for more rather than less memory. Theorized productively in Michael Rothberg's multidirectional memory recently received in Germany almost as controversially as the Nazi Hintergrund intervention. Methodologically, I propose that to move forwards towards productive differentialized solidarities, we tell our own and our family's histories. I was born into a West German working class family mit Nazi Hintergrund. In 1985, I interviewed my mother, who was born in 1918, and I asked her about her teenage years in the 1930s, trying to understand her identification with the Nazi state and its perception of womanhood. Mum's narrative was bursting with nostalgia. She recalled her BDM experience as joyful as any girl guide would narrate her adventures. No misgiving expressed other than that we Germans were supposedly misled and ended up as victims. I was distressed by my family's persistent narrative of German victimhood, especially the endless saga of die Flucht when my mother with my elder sister had fled their home from the approaching Eastern Front, replete with anecdotes about kind as men who had helped feed the starved toddler. Stories of post-war suffering dominated every family gathering when I grew up in the 1960s and 1970s. I never heard at home stories of the Holocaust or any of the extreme violence inflicted upon others by the Nazis and the Wehrmacht. I was horrified reading the newsletters my beloved father regularly received as a member of the Association of Former Arbeitsdienstführer, the Nazis' paramilitary work schemes, and I was alarmed about their nostalgic yearnings for the golden years. No word about atrocities, no word from dad also about what he must have witnessed as a Wehrmacht soldier in Eastern Europe. Never. The newsletters also received horrifically racist contributions by some of my father's former Arbeitskameraden who had emigrated to South Africa and Namibia after the end of the war. The connection to German colonial nostalgia was very obvious. A female relative of Paul von Leto Vorbeck was treated with great respect at the association's annual get-togethers. Presumably this was Leto Vorbeck's daughter who had accompanied her father on his 1953 return trip to Africa, which had been given much positive press in West Germany at the time. And even in the 1980s, this brutal commander of the colonial army, who had been buried with highest military honors in 1965, was still held in high esteem by my father's associates. Things have begun to change over the past decade, of course. Post-colonial and decolonized groups all over Germany have really uh, driven moves to decolonize the public sphere which have grown increasing attention. And the Nazi Hintergrund intervention can really contribute to creating productive 
dynamics of inclusive memory and fault solidarities.